Uh, but then how did you two get together? Because this isn't your first collaboration, right? You've been working together on a bunch of projects. Right. We um, met at Upright Citizens Brigade. It's a sketch comedy class we, we took. They have a, uh, we took sketch comedy 101. And when we met, it was like, wow, wow, where have you been? I, I don't know. I felt like I've known her forever. And it was just magic. We started writing scripts, uh, a shorts, like a sketches. And it was just awesome. Yeah. Yeah, we did a, a sketch comedy show on the internet for three years called Mother Approved. You can still find it at MotherApprovedComedy.com. <laughs> it's still out there. <laughs> it's still in the web. Um, uh, so we did that for three years, and that's where we kind of cut our teeth writing and directing and editing and shooting everything ourselves. Great. Now, so the the film, uh, it's a it's a fun little premise. Anybody who lives in the city, you know, you see these people, dinks, dual income, no kids, and yeah, you know, right, and and the dinks. love of their life is their dog, which they leave in the apartment all day while they're out working hard, and it seems cruel in a weird way. Uh, so yeah, it's weird. It's kind of a fun little premise to poke at, and you poked at it brilliantly. So how did that germinate? Where, where, when did you say, yeah, we got to do that? Um, Layla is my real dog in real life. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and I did have a dog sitter named Jill also. And uh, Jill used to take Layla to the movies and to uh, lunch dates with her friends and to her waxing appointments. She'd ask the front desk lady to hold Layla while she got waxed. And then she would send me videos of her with Layla, and then she'd call her her BFF, and then she started bringing her home later and later, and Brandon finally... I said, I, I said, what if she never brings your dog back? Yeah. And then the, that's where the idea came from. That's yes. And then we also started noticing people in Los Angeles pushing their dogs in strollers and stuffing in, them into baby Bjorns like you see in the movie. Yeah, and I noticed how my parents weren't communicating with each other so well after 40 years of marriage, and that they would use the dog to communicate through, and just that lack of communication between couples and how they have the dog to buffer. Mm -hmm. um, and what level of importance a dog plays in your life? Yeah. And, how do you avoid um, dealing with your own issues by creating relationships with your dog that might mimic human relationships? It's, it's interesting to us. <laughs> Very funny film. I loved it. Any, any uh, questions? Chirp in at any time or raise a hand. We can't really see you very well from here because the lights are right in our eyes, so uh, feel free to shout out a question if you have one. Anyone? There's one over there. Yeah, we actually had two other producers help help us with the movie that we were uh, producing a lot of the movie and then we decided we had to bring somebody else on because we couldn't do everything. And um, they were great. Rebecca Hugh and Adrian, Z uh, Adrian Zodke. Rebecca's from Toronto. Yeah. So how does the yeah, and so the question is, how does the um, funding work for production in the U.S.? And we should repeat these questions so that because we're going to put yeah. this up on the YouTube's. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So for funding in the U.S., I mean, obviously there's various tiers of funding. For our movie is a it's a Screen Actors Guild ultra low budget film, which means that we uh, pay the actors a hundred dollars a day, and then you usually pay the crew the same amount. So it's a very small movie. Um, and what we did to raise money is we went through a crowdfunding campaign through Indiegogo. Um, and we did a little bit of that, but that only raised about a quarter of the budget that we needed for the film. So then we got a private investor and a couple other investors. So the way you, I mean, honestly, I'll be honest with you, you ask your family members <laughs> or people that love you. And they end up being the ones that are uh, um, uh, donating money on, in, on the campaigns anyway. Yeah. Seems like. Save the 13% and go directly to them. But, yeah, I, I would recommend that. And the other thing is that we also have been working in the industry and other positions for years. So we um, pulled a lot of favors. Like, locate. I work as a set medic. I do emergency medicine on TV shows and film. So if there's an accident, I'm the person there to deal with that. And I've been doing that for 11 years. So uh, the locations, I, I drove there myself and I said, hey, I met you working on this show. Can, can I please have it for $300 a day instead of $1,400 a day? Right. She, she turned in a lot of favors. It was great. Like somebody she met five years ago. If you ever need anything, say, hey, guess what? I need something now. I, I and, keep business cards, so look out. If I get yours, I will call you in yeah, five to ten yeah, years. So. 
the place I fill up my oxygen tanks for work uh, it was Stan's office. So I just walked in there. I brought Layla a lot of times because she's cute, and I'd be like, "We didn't have to dress that much at all. It was amazing." It yeah, was, it was a really gross <laughs> was really oxygen gross. office. <laughs> <laughs> Funny. In your case, it would have been fine to find, you know, like a dog that inherited money from a ritual lady. Oh, that would have oh. been. Yeah, that would have been great. That happens. I've, I've seen yeah. it in the newspaper. Yeah, and it's all true in the newspaper. Do you any know any, questions? Paul? What? Do you know any? I don't. <laughs> we could do gone doggy goner. I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't be here. <laughs> <coughs> the dog and I would be in the Bahamas. Um, any other questions for these two wonderful? Producer, creator, director, writer. Jeez, I mean, you there's guys somebody straight, right, oh, straight, somebody? straight ahead. Okay. Hi. Yeah. I can't. Oh I can't. My God. Wag your hand harder. There, you you, that, the person it. wagging. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that person right there. You're more aggressive. So. You're good. <laughs> um, how, how many uh, shooting days did you have for this one? How many shooting days? Well, we had 18 scheduled shooting days, and we had four additional days of photography because um, 18 days wasn't enough to get it all in. There's actually like uh, we cut a half an hour out of the movie. Wow. There, there's a lot of other scenes in the movie, a lot more story, and uh, it, we just had to keep cutting for the pace. Just like we, yeah. you have to kill your babies. There's a lot of jokes in there. Like we're watching the movie, going, "Oh, we're saying the other lines that happen around it." Like, "Oh, that line." Phantom so pains. Yeah, they're phantom pains. <laughs> they're really. But it was it's worth it because the the pace of the movies um, it's like a freight train. We so. shot uh, a lot of times we were shooting eight pages a day and having two moves, which was just ridiculous. Sometimes three. And yeah. yeah, so it was not enough days, honestly. But it was our first film, so we figured that out. Yeah, we couldn't stay on on a shot for long on a setup. We'd have to just do two or three takes and just move on. And it was, um, but we did a lot of pre-production. Casey and I rehearsed a lot at her house because that's her house in the movie. Mm -hmm. So we knew like what we were doing because we were directing too. So um, you know we're not behind we're not behind the camera all the time. We have to be in front of it. So we set up the shot, go over, make sure it looks right. Hopefully nothing changes. Sometimes things changed, um, but then you know we'd we'd want to rely on Garrett, our, our DP. And he'd be like, yeah, it looks great. And then we'd go back and look at it in the dailies. And it did look great, but there are things wrong with like, <laughs> that. That's why he's not the director. That's why he's not the director. And we had realized <laughs> that he can only do so much. And he told us that. I was like, yeah, you're right. So, yeah. so it, was, uh, it, was a dip it was difficult doing that. And the gentleman next to the uh, more aggressive fellow? <laughs> I'm just wondering if the dog in the movie is your actual dog. Yes, yes Layla's my actual dog. She's 11 years old. Um, she's awesome, sweet one. dog, and she's, what'd you, what, what'd you say? <laughs> we have a thing where we're supposed to ask the audience, how old do you think Layla is? <laughs> we think it's funny, I don't know why. Because <laughs> <laughs> we think she looks really young for her age. I think, I, I, I think people think she's like four, or three or four. She's how old do you really guys old. think Layla is, if you didn't know? <laughs> yeah. Four, there we go. Oh, right answer. That's the right answer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes, she has. She's an LA dog. She's had a little work done. So much. Yes, we actually wrote a feature before this one um, that's a comedy film with elements of horror. What? <laughs> yes. Um, it, we're, we love it. It's really funny, but we knew that we didn't want to start do our first feature doing all night shoots and. Yeah. Oh man, we're like this is going to be Bad way too complicated and like special uh, effects. Special and effects. So we're polishing that script um, to do next. Yeah. Where does the movie go mainstream? Like, you make a movie, right? You make a kind of movie or whatever. So how does something? I've seen a few movies at festivals that make it, you know, make become a major hit. Right? Okay. So how, what is it? Just luck. How so, does? So the question is. When right. does it go mainstream, and how does it go mainstream? Is there luck involved? I think t I've been also asking myself that question, obviously. Uh, so I've done a lot of research, a lot of Googling with my face screwed up. How do we make it mainstream? <laughs> but I think the, the answers that I've come up with are you get in a, one of the top three festivals, Sundance, South by South, one, the, one of the festivals that, you know, that, that have the Weinsteins, Right. Coming to, um, so that's one way. Another way 
And, and even then, you're not guaranteed that. Only a few films now that aren't actually a lot of those movies are films. yeah. A lot of those movies are uh, purchased before the festival even begins. People don't even know that. It's just like <laughs> they just announced at Sundance, right. you know. And they're they're usually the larger studios, not yeah. the true indies like like what we did. But the, the the third way is you have a huge star in your film, someone that a uh, bank would write a check for. Right. Um, yeah, like Michael Madsen is on is in every movie. I don't know if you've seen. Yeah, it. for you foreign saw, sales. For foreign sales, yeah. Like, so those are the ways you do that, or you do something small like this, and people like you go out and you tell people, and so you start to build a network, and you go to our website and you tell people to go there, and then because we are getting distribution now, we've had an offer and we're in the process of signing. So what that means for us is we won't do a theatrical release because probably because our, our, we've done a lot of festivals and that's been our theatrical release and it costs a lot of money in advertising to get your film into theater so it wouldn't be worth it for us with no stars. So what we'll do is we'll get on um, uh, video on demand. Uh, we'll get on Amazon, Netflix, iTunes and go that way. So it's really word of mouth that, from people like right. you that helps a movie like that start to pick up steam. So tell your friends. Yeah. So the question is then, uh, just from the financial point uh, and the business uh, of it, then so a big, big film picked up by the big guys, you know, m lots of money uh, up front for the promotion, distribution, so that's expense, and then uh, you expect mm -hmm. huge revenue. So mm -hmm. what's your revenue expense balance on this method of conducting business and film? Uh, what we found is, I'm sorry to say this, <laughs> but what we found is there are no real, there are no real upfronts, which is the money that someone would go, I like your movie, I'm going to give you this amount of money to get to distribute your mo your movie. Uh, the most you can really get for an upfront for a film that doesn't have major stars in is five thousand dollars. That's that's the honest to god truth right now. Yeah. Uh, the people that are distributing our film offer no upfront. Um, they take uh, like 25%. Uh, then you have a sales rep that takes 10%. And then in the end, you're lucky if you make your budget back. That's the truth for indie film right now. And that's over time. Like you're in, in hopefully five or six years, you make the budget back. Correct. That's the ugly truth. The reason you do it is because you want to get your film out there and for people to see it and to like it so that you can do something next right. time. So that we can get money to make the next movie. Oh, yes, you made a, you can make a movie. Great. Here's more money to make a different movie. And then a casting director go, oh, yeah, I saw your movie. I'll help you get this name actor. Uh, and that name actor, if they like the script, they'll tell, they'll tell their agent. And their agent will be like, hey, this is a good script. This, their movie's funny. So it's just like kind of snowballs from there. It's a difficult place right now for independent film. Yeah. It, also because they're trying to figure out the Internet. Like, it's so nebulous how much money they actually bring in. And by they, I mean the, the platforms. Netflix, all of those, they don't really reveal how much money they're making. Yeah, those and numbers it's, aren't released. It's, right. So the, the, it's just, it's like Lord of the Rings. They said they made no money and Peter Jackson had to sue them for money. Yeah. So they made no money on that film. Right, guys? Yeah. <laughs> so it's just pushing money around. And it's the same with being an actor. Like, um, I do a lot of TV commercials, but if they put it on the Internet, they hardly pay us anything because they say they can't prove how many people are watching it. So it's it's a we're in a new new age now where things are moving towards more towards the internet and people de need to be able to prove what they're making on that. I think. Good. Good. Sounds like we need a revolution. That's right. <laughs> yes. Any other questions? Anyone? Anyone? Going once? Going? Oh, right over here. I have a question. You always have questions. We love you. You're so inquisitive. The question is, uh, was there a moral or an anti-capitalistic principle involved that your little lovely dog does not eat dog food? Or have you never thought about getting lots of money from all those stupid dog food cans to fund your movie? Oh, yes. You're t That's what she, uh, this, this lovely lady is talking about product placement. We did try, because we like to try a lot of different things to get money. Uh, so I took photos of Layla with her favorite dog brand, uh, Natural Balance. And she's very small, so she was smaller than the dog bag, and I thought it was really cute. So I took photos, and then I got on Facebook with the, the, uh, the company and tried to, like, hey, get, hey, we're making ooh, a movie. You want to give us some money? Look at our cute dog. 
But is that how you actually pitched it? They, Basically, I acted yeah. like that, really silly, so they didn't believe in me. Um, we tried that, and then we, our producers, uh, Adrienne and Rebecca, also tried a couple things. But I think that the reason it didn't work is because we don't have any stars in our film. So right. they're like, why the heck would we want? <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. We're not even giving you free dog food. Uh, yeah. yeah. You can go to the supermarket and buy your darn yeah. dog food. We any, other, any other questions? Anyone? Anyone? Any? Oh, right over here. How, how did Layla take direction? Ooh. Oh, that's a good one. I trained her for a year and a half because um, we wrote the script for six months, and uh, the first draft, and then we were working it and getting everything together. So I had all that time. And she's really smart, and she loves to learn, and she loves food. <laughs> so I taught her, I made a little uh, mark, they call it, where an actor stands um, for camera. So I made a little mark that she would have to sit on, uh, and then she'd get a treat. And then I would make her sit on that mark, and I would leave the room and come back. And if she was still there, she got another treat. Um, stuff like that. I taught her from the top of a ladder. I taught her how to get in that, that basket at the bottom of the well, which took a long time because she kept just walking out of the well. <laughs> so... Stuff like that. I just taught her at home. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Casey and Brandon, thank you so much thank for sharing you. your film with us. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks for coming and watching our movie, you guys.